Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Karen Bender. Thanks for joining us tonight for our, our webinar on inflammation, elimina or inflammation elimination, resolving inflammation naturally and effectively. We're going to get started just right on the hour in just a few minutes. So um, just give everybody a chance to join us. And if you would like to introduce yourself in the chat, that'd be wonderful. Please say hi. Can everyone hear me okay? I guess if you're having a trouble hearing me, just you can pop something in the chat and let us know while we're waiting. Great, okay, thank you. Great, I'm glad people are able to hear me. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're gonna to get started in just another minute or so. All right, well, my clock says seven, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, again, my name is Dr. Karen Bender from Whole Health Wellness Center. I'm a naturopathic doctor as well as a registered nurse. And tonight we're gonna to be talking about inflammation and how it can affect our overall health and lead to some chronic illnesses when it is not resolved properly. So feel free during this presentation, if you have any questions to go ahead and type them in the chat box and I will do my best to answer them. All right, so. All right, so just a summary of kind of what to expect from this webinar, we're gonna be talking about just what exactly is inflammation. Um, it's a popular topic. A lot of people have been hearing it. It's a bit of a buzzword, but I wanna clarify any misunderstandings that there might be about what it is and when it's problematic and when it's actually healthy and, and helpful for our bodies. And then I'm going to talk about how inflammation becomes chronic and can be lead to a lot of chronic illnesses and diseases that you may think of, um, such as maybe cardiovascular disease or arthritis, but also a few others that most people don't think about being related to inflammation. And then importantly, I will talk about how we can prevent inflammation from becoming chronic and how to treat conditions related to chronic inflammation. And then finally, uh, you'll be given an opportunity to get some information about how to make an appointment with me, or if you're wanting to learn more information about naturopathic medicine, if you are new to understanding what it is, 
you get an opportunity to make a discovery call where you can answer, ask any questions you have about what naturopathic medicine is and see if it might be a good fit for you. All right, so first off, what is inflammation? So I just wanna define kind of what it is. Um, it is a healing process in the body in response to any kind of, of disruption, an invader from something like a virus or bacteria can cause inflammation, also injury to the tissue or something else like a toxin from the environment. It causes a sequence of events where the immune system responds and inflammation is a result. So when you hear that word, um, Feel free, I'd love to hear in the chat box if you guys think inflammation is a good thing or a bad thing. Don't be shy, it's okay. There's no right or wrong answer necessarily. It's a learning opportunity. All right, well, I'll go ahead and tell you. Yeah, so one person says good and the other person says bad and, and actually you're both right. So um, inflammation is good um, in the sense that it causes us, uh, it's a way that our body responds to an, uh, an injury or an invasion, and it's part of the healing process. It becomes bad, however, when it doesn't resolve and it becomes chronic, and then chronic inflammation can cause low-grade damage to the tissues and uh, be related to a lot of chronic conditions. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people think it's bad. Um, um, when they hear it, because a lot of times people think, oh, inflammation is bad, I don't want that. But we're gonna talk about a little bit how it's helpful, um, and then also what we can do to make it from becoming chronic, which is when it's bad. All right, here's just a little bit more information about inflammation. So how do we know inflammation is going on? So the signs of inflammation are heat, redness, swelling, pain, and then sometimes loss of function, whether that's temporary or long-term. So if you think about that previous picture, it was demonstrating a lot of these signs. It was hot, or it was red, and it was presumably hot, and maybe a little swollen and painful. So those are the signs that we can see outwardly that there's inflammation going on. But you will notice that in some conditions, you don't always see those signs on the outside of the body, when they can still be taking place internally. So again, inflammation is a natural and protective response in to specific insults. So like I discussed earlier, there can be injury, whether that is from um, something that happened, uh, maybe a sprained ankle or a broken bone. It can also be surgical cuts and wounds. These are all things that, in, that trigger inflammation that, tra that tells the immune system something's, something's gone wrong and we need to bring in all those uh, immune cells and healing factors to the area to really help to heal the body. It's also a response to foreign invaders such as um, viruses, bacteria, fungus, environmental toxins. But then you'll also see over here a couple of things that contribute to chronic inflammation, which is a pro-inflammatory diet. And I'll talk a little bit more detail of what that means, as well as the aging process. And we'll talk again about that and this concept of inflammation. So just another couple of things to think about for inflammation. The word itself traces back to the word set a fire, which makes sense when you think about all those cardinal signs of heat and redness and swelling and sometimes pain and loss of function. That is like a flame on fire, right? So those are the, those things you think of like rheumatoid arthritis. Sometimes you'll have a swollen joint with redness and swelling. But like I mentioned, there's also some things, some conditions related to chronic inflammation that don't have those signs, that don't have the, the red heat um, and the swelling, such as Alzheimer's and diabetes and some a few others like cardiovascular disease. I'll go into a little more detail further on in the presentation about that. Um, but again, just the, the fact that when this inflammation, this natural healing process, it, for whatever reason, does not resolve, it becomes chronic and then it can lead to a lot of conditions that um, are what we're getting a lot of attention in terms of inflammation at. So you might be wondering, well, what is it exactly that makes inflammation turn chronic and so that it's no longer serving the body but can actually be damaging? So there's many different factors. Um, there's genetic 
um, predisposed back, um, factors that can contribute to inflammation. Some, and some people have um, different genetics that make it more likely that they would have chronic inflammation. There's also dietary factors and lifestyle factors, such as eating foods that are more inflammatory, um, saturated fats, uh, processed foods with more additives in them that the body might see as foreign, high sugar diets, that all causes more inflammation in the body. It also is usually not as rich in some of the things and the nutrients that the body needs to resolve inflammation. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm talking about here with the nutritional insufficiencies of other phyto or plant nutrients needed to help control inflammation. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about what some things you can do dietarily to help reduce inflammation um, or in terms of um, to intercept it so it doesn't become chronic. Um, and then there's some, there can be some factors that kind of just make it so that the normal natural functioning break system of the immune system does not quite work properly. So the inflammation does not resolve as it should. And there's different factors, certain things like specific um, molecules that help resolve inflammation, and sometimes those can be depleted or insufficient. Also, um, certain things can upregulate inflam inflammatory signals. So these are called cytokines. They're just chemical messages in the body that tell the body to start inflammation, and there are certain things that can upregulate those signals, hormones, environmental toxins, and certain viruses and pathogens. All right, here's a little bit more detail about some of the causes of chronic inflammation. So um, metabolic imbalances, so visceral fat. So fat itself is actually inflammatory. It, it causes the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines to be released higher than they normally will. And this is particularly true of visceral fat. So that is the fat that goes, um, that stores around the organs. And that is why that's considered the more dangerous place to have fat because when it's on those organs, it creates even more inflammation. Other conditions um, such as insulin resistance when the body is no longer responding to an insulin and it needs more and more insulin for it to do its job of bringing energy into the cells. Um, that itself, when you have sugar in the blood, um, the higher blood sugars, like in conditions with insulin resistance or diabetes, you end up getting um, that sugar itself causes inflammation in the arteries, and those are called advanced glycation end products or ages, that those are damaging to the tissues as well. And again, nutritional excess so ex ex um, and poor quality of the calories can lead to a um, visceral fat development. And then nutritional deficiencies, not having those phytonutrients that you get from good healthy diet, rich in fruits and vegetables needed to resolve inflammation. And then here is a big one, gut health. So um, may, maybe you've heard of this, um, it's getting a lot of attention in alternative health world in terms of the importance of gut health and how it contributes to um, the development of many different conditions when it is no longer um, in balance. So that, that you, one thing that can happen is dysbiosis. So that is when you have the um, bacteria, the microbiome that's in your colon it is no longer beneficial, but maybe it's overgrown with some bad bacteria, or maybe there, the, there is not enough of the good bacteria there. That is called dysbiosis. And that can cause things like leaky gut and IBS or irritable bowel syndrome because those, those bacteria can release endotoxins, which are then um, can be brought into the bloodstream, causing a lot of inflammation. It can also lead to, lead to things like food sensitivities, where if you have leaky gut, you have um, those molecules of food getting into the bloodstream before they're fully digested causing cross-reactivity with the immune system, which can lead also to autoimmunity. So those are all really related, the gut health um, and how if you have any problems with your gut health, it's really something you don't want to ignore. So signs of that could be constipation or chronic loose stools or diarrhea, gas and bloating, 
even heartburn can all be related to some imbalances in your gut health that could be affecting inflammation. A few other factors are just physical and emotional stress. So when we think of physical stress, that can be things like lack of sleep, can be in infections, um, it can be even exposure to extremes in temperature. Um, it also can be things like um, just having uh, exercising too hard actually can be a physical stressor that can lead to, lead, lead to chronic inflammation. And then emotional stress, of course, also can affect the hormone system, the endocrine system, which can affect the immune system. And then oxidative stress from things like uh, exposure to any kind of um, environmental toxins. Um, oxidative stress also just occurs in many of the body's own natural biochemical reactions. And in order to counteract that, we have things called antioxidants that we need to have in our diet that are also made in the body to counteract that oxidative stress. Um, other things that can contribute to chronic inflammation, um, microbial infections, viruses and bacteria and fungus, and then environmental pollutants. So you can see there, uh, there's a lot of things that we have to consider when we're thinking about inflammation. And so what we do in naturopathic medicine is we stop and we, we listen to the whole picture, see what kind of exposures people might have, and try to address all of them in order to really try to address the inflammation. Here's another slide, <clears throat> excuse me, just depicting um, some of the factors that can lead to inflammation becoming chronic and sort of the diseases associated with them. Just another way of looking at it. So things like inactivity, obesity, the natural aging process, those all can really um, be related to increased inflammation. And how we see that is in um, when we have the fat cells or adipocytes, being increased, that increases the, like I was saying before, the cytokines that can lead to insulin resistance or diabetes. When immune cells become inflamed or when they're responding to inflammation in the blood vessels, it causes cardiovascular disease by developing these plaques uh, called atherosclerosis. And then the brain can be affected by uh, inflammation affecting uh, mental function conditions like Alzheimer's disease, Huntington's and Parkinson's disease, but even um, depression as well can be affected by inflammation occurring in the brain. And then you see here cancers as well, um, and then arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease in this particular case, where the immune cells start to attack the, um, the joints. So here's just another uh, slide to kind of depict and drive it home my point of how chronic inflammation really does lead to many different um, conditions that are considered chronic um, conditions. Cardiovascular disease by the development of those plaques um, that can lead to heart attack and stroke. Um, that, that is a whole other presentation I've done um, previously, if interested. Um, can let me know and I can do it again. Um, but those are some things that can cause, inflammation causes those plaque formations to form that can lead to heart attack and, and um, strokes as well. Um, cancer, specifically lung, kidney, gastric, colon, pancreatic and lymphoma cancers are linked with chronic inflammation. Uh, inflammation disorders such as pancreatitis, anything, whenever you see it in medicine, itis at the end, that means it's related to inflammation, um, just as a, a way to think about that. Um, diabetic complications, so that's related to those high, high blood sugar in the blood, chronically leading to some damage to nerve cells, causing neuropathy, damage to the kidney cells, causing, causing nephropathy or kidney disease. Um, can lead to sepsis, just infection of the blood, and then also retinopathy, which is um, the degradation of the vessels in the eye and the retina that can cause problems. Uh, I won't go through all of these necessarily, the me metabolic disorders we discussed previously um, in terms of type 2 diabetes, um, also fatty liver disease and other cardiovascular diseases related to that. 
um, chronic pain disorders like fibromyalgia, um, rheumatoid arthritis, and then also just degenerative joint disease. Uh, so this is kind of repetitive here, but neurological diseases, again, with the dementias, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and then some of the mental health disorders. I do want to take a moment to just talk about um, depression and its relation to um, inflammation, just because there's been some research, research I want to point out about how there are cells in the brain called microglial cells, and they're these tiny little immune cells that for a really long time, they were thought to not have a very important role in the brain. In the last couple of decades, researchers have discovered that they have a really important role in protecting the brain and having an immune function in the brain. And when they become dysfunctional through a variety of different ways, um, highlighted before in terms of, um, you know, even starting from the gut, if you have those endotoxins from just uh, from the microbiome or the good bacteria being out of balance in your gut can affect um, the immune cells in the brain. And that is can be linked to and help, um, help explain some, some causes of depression. All right, so uh, what is inflammaging, other than kind of a funny word? Um, so I mentioned it earlier, essentially it's as we age, we have an accumulated effect. And so if we have an accumulation of more inflammatory things going on our, in our body, then the um, anti-inflammatory responses, then we have accumulation of inflammation. And that has been linked to accelerating the, biolog bi the uh, biological process of aging and can worsen age-related diseases. And chronic inflammation is, is kind of the underlying cause of this. Um, I had a question uh, about how do we get rid of inflammation? And thank you for asking that. I am getting to that. I, it's definitely a part of this presentation, so stay tuned. Here's just another slide um, depicting inflammation. Inflammaging, it's kind of a hard word to say. Um, and essentially, it's just think of, of you have a bunch of chronic inflammation, it's not getting resolved over time. It accumulates and it causes, uh, contributes to the development of these various um, chronic illnesses related to chronic inflammation. All right, so here is a, a, a good slide to just kind of show the process of inflammation. It's, it's a process that goes, um, there's different factors that mediate it. First, it's initiated by an assault on the, or some kind of, something happens in the body that initiates it. So whether that's a cut on your finger or the entrance of a virus in your body, that initiates the inflammation healing response. And over time, there should be some mediators that come and clean up the inflammation once the issue is resolved. And then you, um, you heal and it's done. But if you don't have that process happening properly because of maybe some nutritional deficiencies or different factors, then the inflammation does not fully resolve and it continues causing um, a chronic state. So this one helps to show how when, it's an, when you have the initiation of inflammation, one of those factors that helps to move towards resolution is here, the SPMs, or Specialized Pro-Resolving Mediators. So those are molecules that help to clean up the inflammation, help to resolve it, and they're made in the body, but they're also um, something that you can take as a nutritional supplement derived from fish oil, there are specific molecules that are very effective at helping address chronic inflammation by helping resolve inflammation that's happened in the body. When you don't have enough of those, you're more prone to chronic inflammation. All right, so for, for Gigi who asked in the audience, what can be done? So there's a lot of different things. So just as there are many things that can contribute to inflammation, there are a lot of factors that can be, um, that you can do to help also counteract chronic inflammation. So in terms of lifestyle factors, um, eating an organic 
whole food diet. So organic food is going to be lower in pesticides and different thing, chemicals that can um, actually initiate inflammation. Whole food, all I mean by that, a whole food diet is something that is not processed. So easy way to think about it is if it didn't come from a package, it's a whole food, generally speaking. There's some exceptions to that, that rule. You know, um, of course, the main things you think of is um, fruits and vegetables, but there's also whole grains that you might get in packaging. Um, but usually if, if a food label has multiple ingredients, it's not a whole food. Um, so those are things that you take home and you make food at home. And that is also going to give you more um, antioxidants in your diet, more phytochemicals that can help resolve that inflammation. Uh, the other one is minim minimize exposure to environmental toxins. And so one of the ways you can do that is by eating organic foods but also looking at different factors of things that you might know um, in your environment that might be affecting you. A big culprit there can be the things that you put on your skin and in your hair, your personal care beauty products you use every day can also sometimes be a source of um, environmental toxin exposure. Seems surprising, um, but there are many chemicals that are added into, farms or into um, beauty products that are actually banned in Europe. Um, so if you're interested in finding some ways to help reduce that exposure, I recommend using the Environmental Working Group. They have a, an app called Healthy Living, and you can actually scan the products um, that you purchase in the store, um, and they have a really large database that they rate the products based on the research that has been done on the individual ingredients that are in that, pod, in that product that you scan. Now, not every product is in there, and they're constantly scanning it, but it's a really great place to start to look and see some of those, those um, chemicals that you're putting on your body, because your, your skin is your largest organ, and it is very absorptive, um, and so you want to really be careful about what you're um, exposing yourself to. Other one here um, is to manage stress. So um, stress, chronic stress, whether physical or emotional, can be a factor that definitely contributes to inflammation. So um, learning different techniques that work for you. Uh, my favorite thing and most probably easy, portable, um, easy to learn thing to do, free, um, is your breath. So learning to really breathe properly from your diaphragm and doing breathing exercises on a regular basis can really help with managing stress. The other one is regular physical activity. Um, that can help with managing stress, but it also can help with maintaining a healthy weight, um, which is important for reducing inflammation too, just because of the fact that the excess of fat and that visceral fat contributes to inflammation by releasing those cytokines that are more inflammatory. So those are things you can do. Um, you know, you can start, maybe pick one thing you wanna work on and um, start there and you'll start to hopefully notice a difference with just, just a couple of those things there. In terms of therapeutic interventions, things that we can do um, would be red light therapy. Um, I will discuss that. I've got some slides describing what that is and how that works. The SPMs or the specialized pro-resolving mediators that I discussed on that previous slide that come from fish oil, you can take that as a supplement. It can be very effective for helping to resolve inflammation. There are many different anti-inflammatory herbs um, that you can do that you can take to help with inflammation. Things like curcumin is probably the most um, widely known, but also there's there's most herbs have some anti-inflammatory property. Another one you might know of that's common use of a culinary herb is ginger, very anti-inflammatory as well. And then certain vitamins and minerals um, providing you with antioxidants, things like vitamin C, uh, minerals such as magnesium. Many people are deficient in magnesium and it is responsible for over 300 uh, chemical processes in the body that involve from things from how nerves function to also how um, how the body detoxifies from certain um, things that could be causing some inflammation. And then omega-3 fatty acids um, are a nutrient that can be taken as a supplement to help resolve or reduce inflammation in the body. And I have another slide for that that's 
discuss that in more detail as well. And it's this one. So here you can see um, the two different omegas. Um, there's omega-6 and then omega-3. And um, DHA and EPA are kinds of fish oils that are omega-3s that help support inf have healthy inflammation because they, um, they lead to some end products that are less inflammatory. So you can see here, um, we're trying to depict the, the EPA coming from fish oil supplement in that gel cap and then also from dietary sources such as fish. Um, that I believe is probably salmon because it's a very good source. With fish, you want to be careful which fish you eat. There's different ones that have higher amounts. Um, larger fish tend to accumulate more toxins. And then there's also things to be considered um, just in terms of environmental um, impacts of certain fish eating them. So some really good ones that would be wild caught salmon, um, also things like sardines, herring, um, those kind of fish are smaller and they don't accumulate as much um, toxins. They don't bioaccumulate as much and they're also can be more sustainably fished. If you're curious about that, there are there's an app from the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Um, they do a fish watch. So if you just Google Monterey Bay fish watch, it, you can find some information about what fish they recommend in terms of being healthy for you, but also um, less damaging for the environment to um, eat. So, uh, you know, increasing your intake of healthy fish as well as taking a fish oil supplement can be really helpful for reducing inflammation and can be preventative of, um, you know, it can prevent a lot of illness, chronic illnesses related to inflammation. And actually, um, it's been really well researched that taking fish oil can help with um, depression as well, and it might be because of the anti-inflammatory properties that are there. Um, these over here, the omega-3s or omega-6s, those are coming from the arachidonic acid. Those are coming th from things like red meat, um, other, other things like that. So we want to limit that. Um, and here's just a picture to show um, how we need to have oxidative stress in, in balance with, or the thing, oxidative stress causes antioxidants in the body. So we need and free radicals. Sorry, I said that wrong. Oxidative stress causes free radicals in the body. So we need antioxidants to counteract them. Otherwise, we get inflammation. So this is what this is showing, that we need to have a balance of those antioxidants counteracting the free radicals in order to prevent that, that from, from getting out of balance and, and leading to more chronic inflammation. All right. Uh, I see a question about some medication. So that is going to be a more specific um, medical question uh, that I'm unfortunately not able to answer in this format. But if you, I would be happy to answer that question. Um, if you wanted to make an appointment, I can consult you on that definitely. All right. Okay, so now we are looking at red light therapy, which I mentioned previously as a therapeutic um, intervention for reducing inflammation. And how it works is we have um, this red light that comes from this, it looks, um, it's a bed, it's a full body exposure. That's why it's called a Theralite 360 because you get covered in 360 degree, 360 degrees um, by this red light. And it helps to uh, reduce inflammation in just as um, a short session of 15 minutes, and it's very relaxing as well as another added benefit is it helps for stress reduction. If you're wondering how it works, I kind of laid it out. Um, you can see basically this red light um, helps to uh, stimulate these mitochondria, and that's the, what's pictured here. Mitochondria are the organelles of your cells that are uh, responsible for making ATP, which is the energy currency of your body. So you stimulate these energy cells to make to be more efficient, and it helps to, with um, cell proliferation and cell turnover, and it helps resolve inflammation. Is kind of the nitty gritty of how it works on a cellular level. Oh, Doreen has a question. Um, supplement for oxidative stress. 
So um, what are the, you know, um, any kind of supplement that is going to be high in antioxidants that can come from plants. Um, you know, reversitol is another example um, of a, a compound that's helpful. Dark berries, um, blueberries, blackberries, those kind of things um, are really helpful. Um, also taking, you know, having a balanced diet that's rich in vegetables and uh, those phytonutrients can be really helpful. Um, but there are definitely some supplements that are compounded for being um, antioxidants that are really great. Um, there isn't necessarily just one that's the best. All right, so summary of inflammation, just to kind of um, over and just discuss again all the different things that we were discussing. Just a reminder that inflammation is a natural response and that there's different stages it's initiated and then it's resolved. And there's different parts of the immune system that are involved with that. And there's different things that can trigger that in terms of viruses or cell damage. And um, even just a diet that can cause more inflammation, the natural aging process, um, that is all contributes to what leads to inflammation, but really becomes problematic when it's not resolved and it becomes chronic. And then it can lead to a lot of different chronic inflammation inflammatory states, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, um, neurological um, diseases like Alzheimer's as well. All right, so I hope this, this was a uh, presentation gave you some new information um, that helped you feel inspired. Got another question here, can you resolve aging inflammation? So yeah, there's definitely some things that you can do to help with that. And that's some of those lifestyle factors that we discussed as well as some of the supplements. We really wanna keep the oxidative stress balanced out by those antioxidants and also just limiting the exposure that you have to different things that can trigger inflammation as well. So limiting toxic exposure, eating a good whole foods diet, those are all things that help to um, mitigate inflammation from becoming chronic. So um, there's a lot of different factors that can be causing that. And so one of the strengths of naturopathic medicine is we really look at all the different factors that are affecting the individual and try to figure out where to start uh, to address those factors, but how to limit them, exposure, and then also what nutrients specifically you might need to replace. And so that can be done with uh, some different diagnostic testing, to see what, if you have exposure to say heavy metals or if you're depleted in some nutrients, there's some uh, functional medicine testing that can be done to really help to assess that so we can be more specific in how we target um, the inflammation that might be happening in, in each person. Um, and then as you can sort of see what I was addressing in the slide, we're really trying to address all components of um, your health, not just covering up symptoms, but really trying to figure out what is causing them and how are they all interconnected. And so we see the body as a whole and we really want to address all those, those topics or those factors together, as well as mental emotional factors, because we all know how much stress can affect overall health. And then it's also helpful just to have a, a team of people that are cheering you on and supporting you and giving you information, good information as well as um, really just kind of coaching you along as um, you go through your healing process. So, you know, uh, sometimes we, we learn about information like this or we're having um, different health issues. We really think about like, what is our, our why? What is our, our passion? Why do we want to feel our best? What is our, you know, motivating us? So it can take a moment to just kind of think about that. Like, what is your why? What, what do you, why do you want to make some changes to really uh, protect your health, whether it be in your diet or adding some supplements or different things? Um, and so I have pictured here a picture of my golden retriever puppy this last winter, and her name is Happy because her purpose is to bring more joy into the world, and she does a really good job. She's a little bigger than that now, but she's still just as happy. I'd just like to share that. 
And then, um, so now is your opportunity. Um, when the presentation ends in just a few more minutes, um, you will have an opportunity to make an appointment for a free call with one of the members of our team. If you're um, curious about naturopathic medicine, you want to learn more and see if we might be a good fit for you, um, we'll just talk to you, see what's going on um, with you, and see if we, we think that um, naturopathic medicine might be a good fit for you. And um, if you decide that you want to make a visit, the first consultation we can do um, either in person or virtually. It's up to you. We have flexibility with that. And we'll just let you know the insurances that we accept are listed there. Um, and usually the first appointment is a comprehensive visit. So because we really want to treat the whole person, we go over your whole health history and detail, um, including a lot of lifestyle factors and then come up with a plan from there. And now um, it's kind of a special offer for people who participated in this webinar. You can get a free body composition test. So this is uh, the in body. You can see this um, young lady standing on this machine. And what it does is it sends electrical impulse through the body that is painless, that helps to determine the amount of muscle and fat your body is composed of. And that can be a really <clears throat> helpful indicator of your health in terms of understanding do we need to work on reducing the inflammation by addressing excessive um, visceral fat? So it's a really good just diagnostic tool for figuring out the baseline of where we are and, um, and addressing that as needed. So if you make a, an appointment and tell them that you watched this webinar, we will give you a free in body body composition at your first visit. So that, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you were able to glean a little a few little nuggets of information that are going to be helpful for you, um, or at least get yourself thinking about some things that you you want to want to do. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you. Let's have a let's have a talk. Um, once I end this call or once I end the presentation, again, there will be an opportunity for you to click a button to sign up for a free discovery call. And it's a great opportunity if you're feeling, if you want to learn more, to learn about naturopathic medicine and how I um, might be able to help you. So thanks again for joining us tonight. And um, I'll be doing more of these presentations in the future. And we're, you know, passionate about education and helping people feel empowered to, you know, take, take um, charge of their health and feel the best they can. All right. Thanks. All right. Great, everybody. Thanks again for coming tonight and I hope you have a great rest of your evening.